An ESPN reporter, Nick Friedel, joins me live now for more on this. Nick, thank you for being here. We saw that heated exchange you had with Kyrie Irving at that press conference. What was your reaction to his response to you? Don't dehumanize me up here. That was about the eighth or ninth time, Diane, that he and I have had a big back and forth over the course of the last year. Last season, it was about his anti-vaccination stance and, and why he chose to do so. And I think Kyrie struggles sometimes to articulate why he's making uh, the decision. But what struck me is uh, I didn't think it was that much different than any other exchange that we had had in the past. Over the last couple days, and even in the, the next few minutes after I walked out of that press conference room, I can't tell you how many people texted me or called and just said, thanks, because they were really upset by what Kyrie had posted. And they didn't understand why he didn't just come out and say, I'm not anti-Semitic. Now, after about a week, Kyrie did take responsibility for the tweet and its potential negative impact, but he's repeatedly said he's not anti-Semitic, that he's just trying to learn from people from different walks of life. What's your response to that? Well, the one thing that, as I talk to people inside the league, and I talk to my friends who don't care about basketball and haven't watched a game, but they're familiar now with this story, what they're waiting to hear from Kyrie is, I'm sorry. And that wasn't in the statement. That wasn't in that press conference exchange the other night. That is what a lot of people are waiting on Kyrie to say because in the moment, he didn't really realize or seem to care just how many people were impacted by what happened. So it will be very interesting moving forward. The next time that he speaks to the media, speaks publicly, just what kind of messaging that he does say and how he responds that the questions that both he and the Nets know are coming his way. But Kyrie and the Nets did just announce that they will donate $500,000 each to educational programming to combat all forms of anti-Semitism and bigotry. So how much does that help to make this right? I think it goes uh, a long way. I think it's a solid first step. But again, when you're speaking to people inside the league office, when you're speaking to, as I have in the last few days, net season ticket holders, what they want to hear from Kyrie is, is some remorse. And the statement is, is solid. The donation is a very strong gesture, especially if he follows up uh, with it over time. And I know having talked to him in passing over the last year, how much it means to him to be a bridge for kids from all walks of life to see him succeed. But unless in that public forum, when he gets those questions, he answers things the way a lot of people would like for him to do so, it is going to be a really, really hard battle for Kyrie to earn back the trust not only from fans, but people within his own organization who are really upset by the way he handled things in the first place. Uh, now, Nick, Minnesota Timberwolves' Anthony Edwards was fined $40,000 for using homophobic language in September. Uh, some critics are saying that Kyrie should receive similar punishment or be suspended from the team even. Uh, what's your take on that? Do you think more should be done here? I think it's all a waiting game and a holding pattern at the moment because there are a lot of people around the league who believe that Kyrie should face some, some form of punishment. And we heard Charles Barkley in that clip. He's one of many that believes that Kyrie should be suspended. But I think the NBA itself is waiting for how Kyrie responds moving forward because they want to see if he shows that remorse and if he understands the magnitude of what's occurred now in the last week. But I don't think this story is over at all. I think it will continue to hang over the team and the league until he makes his next statement formally. All right, Nick Friedel, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.